Hi, and welcome again to the channel Newtown Naughty Boy. And in this video, we will be looking at the HFT 500 by Air Arms. Now, I bought this rifle um, about three or four weeks ago. I probably should have done an unboxing video, but I was so excited by this gun that uh, I decided to just get it out of the box and start shooting with it. So this HFT 500 from Air Arms I bought, as I said, um, a few weeks back now, and I bought it from uh, Donaldson's in Milton Keynes, and the price was, I believe, £840. So I thought that was a good buy and um, I'm very pleased with the gun. Um, so let's have a look at some of the features of the HFT 500 and um, I've, as I said I've had a chance to shoot this gun now uh, and I'm, I'm very very pleased with how it's performed. Now of course the HFT 500 is as the name uh, states uh, it's a uh, HFT Hunter Field target rifle that Air Arms have produced uh, specifically for that type of discipline um, and it kind of falls outside I guess the range of other rifles that Air Arms produces the uh, 200 and 400 and 500 series um, then you have the 900, the FT900. So this gun's a little bit of a different animal to uh, the rest of the ra the range of air arms rifles that are produced. So the 500 actually has, as you can see, a very nice uh, laminate stock. Um, they do tend to vary a little bit in colour. Some seem to be more grey than others that are brown in actual fact I don't know if this is the light but this one here is actually more grey than brown I've seen a few around that uh, seem to be more brown than the grey colour here um, I don't know if that's intentional or just how the laminate has been produced so um, it's a nice stock for use outside it seems to be um, it seems to be um, have a finish on it that is kind of um, not too slippery so I found the um, the FT900 too glossy for my hands it, it felt like a bar of soap uh, when I used that rifle and um, the finish on this stock seems to be um, just about right and it has some stippling uh, in the right places to enable you to actually grip the gun pretty well. So the gun uh, sports a few um, different aspects that we'll look at or discuss. Uh, one of them is, is on the end of the barrel here we have an air stripper. So um, this is obviously something that won't uh, quieten the gun down at all but will allow the air to be stripped away from the pellet as it heads down the barrel which is quite useful. The stock on the uh, HFT 500 is fully adjustable the uh, butt pad is um, can move uh, up and down and slightly from left to right and also your cheek piece here can be raised or lowered and actually tilted as well so um, on mine I've actually tilted the the cheek piece slightly um, towards my face as, as I found that the best uh, setup for, for me to align myself with the scope so that's great that's exactly what you want um, on a gun that you use for HFT so another aspect of the HFT 500 is that it has an extra long uh, air tube and 
this is in fact actually the same air tube that's used on air arms guns um, that are the FAC uh, type, the, the type of guns that are actually over 12 foot pounds. That doesn't mean that this rifle shoots at 12 foot pounds, um, but it is the actual air tube that's actually used on those guns. So this is extra long or longer than uh, maybe uh, would normally be the case um, for a lot of uh, air rifles used in uh, HFT, but um, because it does have an extra long cylinder, this means of course that you get um, a lot more shots from a fill and also this means of course that the sweet spot of your rifle is much longer as well. And we'll look at some of the uh, informational data that I've actually been able to obtain um, from shooting this rifle through a chronograph. So one of the disadvantages I suppose um, to an extent is because it does have this long tube um, it's added weight to the front of the gun um, so I feel that the gun is a little bit nose heavy now some people may actually like that aspect um, it's something that I'm actually aware of when I do shoot the gun um, uh, in one of the uh, non-supported standing positions it feels a little bit nose heavy but I'm quite prepared to uh, put up with that disadvantage um, considering all the other aspects of this rifle. So if we take a closer look where the air stripper is you'll see that the barrel is in fact actually floating here. Um, you'll see towards the end on the actual um, the air tank uh, underneath the barrel there's uh, a rubber nipple sticking up there that's almost touching the barrel um, but the barrel is in free float and that nipple there is just to ensure that um, the barrel never moves very far if, if it is if it hits something or you um, bash it on the end it's not going to uh, bend the barrel in any way it's just going to hit this this rubber uh, restraint there but as you as I pan down you'll see that the whole barrel is in free float and that's great because that means that as the pellet travels down the length of the barrel um, there isn't anything uh, or there are no vibrations from the gun that's going to travel towards the end of the gun as the pellet is actually traveling down the barrel um, because there's no um, support there there's nothing that's actually going to set any vibrations up at the end of the gun. So just homing in on the trigger here um, this gun has a fully adjustable trigger uh, for its first and second stages and also the um, the length of pull the whole trigger mechanism can be moved forward or back to ensure that actually your finger is in the right position for, for where you want to rest your finger on that trigger. Now, for those of you that may have seen pictures or own an HFT500, you'll notice that actually I've removed the trigger shoe from the, uh, the gun itself. It comes with a button trigger. I can't get on with these button triggers and actually the button trigger that is on this rifle is quite large and I found that um, I couldn't actually get uh, a good feeling of the trigger um, with this huge button on the end of the shaft here. So what I've done um, here is that I've taken the trigger off my Air Arms MPR which is a normal shoe type trigger and I've actually just um, put it onto the gun. So those um, trigger shoes actually fit straight on with no trouble at all. And that's made the whole operation quite comfortable for me. And it's just down to personal taste really. Some people like the button, some people don't. But there are shoes around um, 
that fit onto this spindle here and um, if if you're like me then it's quite easy to actually change this over so whilst we're down this end you can actually see now the stippling there on the hand grip it's uh, quite substantial and um, you need this sort of grip really um, in this place so that's great uh, it's quite comfortable and uh, just gives you that extra bit of grip there that's needed so just looking at the underside here as we pass the underside of the uh, trigger guard here you've got your gauge there for your pressure to give you an indication of your fuel pressure and as we travel along and zoom out a little bit you'll see that there's an accessory rail I've actually got my sling actually attached to this accessory rail at the moment but um, there are a whole variety of things that you could attach here one of the things that a lot of people put onto this gun is uh, a hamster uh, which is obviously an extension um, uh, to extend the depth of the gun um, some people find this useful for HFT um, I in particular don't actually feel I need a hamster under this gun the depth of the gun if I turn the gun back over here so this portion here which is where my hand would be when I'm taking those standing shots I feel the depth here is actually quite adequate uh, so I won't actually be putting a hamster on this this particular gun uh, I don't actually feel that it actually needs it so before we actually look at the results from the chronograph uh, just to mention that the scope that I actually use on this gun is a uh, Vortex Viper um, if any of you want me to review this scope um, I'm quite prepared to do that um, it's quite an expensive scope I found it very very useful and very, a very clear scope to use for HFT um, just send me a message or leave a comment uh, in the comments area if you would like me to go over this scope uh, and uh, show you what the uh, facilities are of this particular scope from uh, Vortex okay so let's now have a look at the actual results of the HFT 500 okay so what we're looking at here is a graph of the results or from the results of my uh, chronograph test I filled the gun to a 190 bar pressure and I began to take shots and I noted down after each shot what the uh, feet per second was and I shot a whole selection of shots from one right the way through to the end here which was uh, 109 so I shot 109 shots and as you can see we have uh, of the very characteristic curve that we would get from um, a gun that doesn't have a regulator now I've done a previous video using my NPR uh, to demonstrate why it's important to actually do um, a test such as this if you buy a new gun or a, a second hand gun and why you need to understand from results uh, where the sweet spot is um, of your particular gun and so this was the first action that I did um, before even going out and shooting the rifle um, I did this chronograph test so initially shot number one was uh, about 766 um, feet per second and as you can see as each shot was taken it the velocity um, began to rise when 
the pressure in the cylinder got to about 165 around about here this was shot 33 or approximately about shot 33 34 and then the curve uh, began to flatten out slightly through this period here now I've drawn two lines here from around about the cylinder fill pressure of 165 um, I've drawn a line through and also I've drawn a line across where the top of the results are where the highest feet per second was recorded and I've written here that actually the difference in velocity um, between the two lines here is actually only 10 feet per second so where I want to shoot this gun for competitions are where the actual um, velocities uh, are between these two lines so although I can of course fill the air pressure up on my cylinder to 190 that's not where my sweet spot is so what I do is now I've done uh, this graph and I understand what the results are what I actually do now is actually I fill my cylinder up to 165 and I know then that I've got all of these consistent shots for the competition that are only going to vary within 10 feet per second and that's quite good in fact actually that's really as good as a gun that has a regulator on it so I have easily 60 shots probably between the 165 fill and where it starts to drop off which is um, around about 140 130 so that gives me an adequate amount of shots you only need 30 shots for uh, an HFT competition so I've got ample here for my initial practice shots and then the competition itself so when you get your gun or any gun you need to do some sort of analysis like this to understand where your sweet spot is and as I said there is another video that I took or I, I recorded and published um, several weeks ago um, regarding my NPR and uh, that perhaps goes into a little bit more detail about what we're doing here so certainly have a look at that okay so that concludes my video today on the Air Arms HFT 500 if you have any comments um, please uh, comment in the comment box um, on this video and I'll try and answer any questions that you might have if you would like further information do the same send me a, a message or a comment um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, please, please press like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more um, and I will see you on the next video thank you very much for watching well if you have ever wondered where the name Newtown Naughty Boy comes from well you can learn a little bit more about that um, I did write a book last year and uh, quite recently I've had the book republished um, it's got a nice new cover on it it details uh, my story really uh, growing up uh, in the UK in a small town and uh, all the things that I got up to uh, during the 50s 60s and 70s there's quite a bit in there there's some pictures there's illustrations there's a little bit of naughtiness there's quite a bit of air gun shooting and shenanigans there's stuff that will make you laugh in this book it's a book you can order from Amazon but also it's available on Kindle quite cheaply so why not give it a go it's a really good read and then you can give me some feedback on it um, hope you enjoy give it a try